suppose I remember even as a kid that uh, when I was watching films, I remember being as tuned in to the music as I was to the, the film itself. Um, so it goes back a very long way. I never thought I would be lucky enough to actually work in film, but um, having read music at university, then involved in Cambridge Footlights and all of that, and coming up through then uh, that field and into theatre, and then into television and eventually into film, it was sort of a natural progression. And I've always, out of choice, been listening to people like Korngold and Steiner and you know, all those mm -hmm. um, people that we take our hats off to and that people like John Williams now you owe a huge debt to. And it's just sort of gone on from there, really. And to be able to conduct this concert for, uh, of music for some of our heroes is, is you know, what's Terrific. not to like? And in, in my case, I can remember the exact moment I thought, I want to do that. Really? <laughs> and it was after watching Bambi, oh. the film which, of course, absolutely wrecked me emotionally. I mean, I just went home and cried all the way home. And uh, interestingly, I didn't see the film again until I was alone in a picture house in Notting Hill Gate when I was 22. And thank God I was alone, and thank God there was no one else there, because I was... <laughs> <laughs> so ba so Bambi has a lot to answer So for. Bambi was the thing. But, you know, there were other films. Uh, the Big Country, I remember, kind of, oh, I do want to do that. Yeah, I yeah. do want to do films. Um, and I loved some of the music, obviously, but it was also a feeling that I perhaps could do it. Perhaps mm. I could have a go at it. And of course, one of the great um, things about writing music for television and theatre for a composer is that your music gets played instantly. I know. You actually write the music and then you get to hear it played by some of the finest, finest musicians in the country. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're writing purely for the concert hall, that doesn't always happen. And no, that, exactly does make it, it's, that does make it a very attractive proposition. And also, as you say, you can earn a living doing it. Uh, absolutely. Is. Well, it, it is true that both you and I um, are relative strangers to the concert platform, isn't it? But at the same time, we have both conducted a huge amount. Um, I mean, I've... Behind the scenes, as yeah. it were. Hmm. You know, locked away in recording studios, in theatre pits, and goodness knows where, but... Um, it's interesting, because unlike some film composers, you and I do enjoy conducting our own stuff. Yeah, there true. are some composers who will get other people to conduct but you and I are sort of the animals that like to get up there and actually be in charge. I, I do I think we're much. control freaks, Chris. I think that's well, what it's all about. It, it is partly control freakery, but it, it's something else as well, because, um, you know, composing can be the most dreadfully lonely, horrible business because you're stuck away in your room at home with nobody to talk to. You can't have other people around. In a garret with a guttering candle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, in your case, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and and so it's so nice to get out and you know converse with musicians, work with them, um, and also we both worked with the Royal Philharmonic on several occasions, and indeed they recorded true. the Ladies of Lavender score originally for the film. Oh, did they? Yes, oh, they I did. So it's very much their their gig, really. Mm. And we've both enjoyed working with them hugely. They're a great orchestra to work with, aren't they? It's a it's a it's an interesting orchestra. Um, I feel that it's it's probably a little bit more versatile than than most mm. because they do get to play a fantastic variety of music. I mean, I'm going to a concert later in the week where they're doing Ein Heldenleben by Richard Strauss. Um, I've also heard them playing all sorts of stuff in concert. I mean, they do rock concerts. Mm -hmm. um, and you have that feeling when you present them with the music that nothing's going to phase them yeah, at all. They're, absolutely. They're, and the other thing is, I've never had any sort of bad vibes from them. They're always terribly friendly. And very supportive. And helpful. Mm, yeah. And I've recorded three of my symphonies with them now, as well as, um, you know, working with them on, uh, you know, on other film music concerts. I've done film harmonic mm -hmm. um, a couple of times and so on. And I've just find them, found them to be absolutely brilliant. And the other thing is, it should be mentioned, 
incredibly fast. Yeah. And when you play something through the first time and they've never played it before, it is like a performance yeah. already. And, and especially with a concert staggering. like the one on June the 14th, a lot of the music is actually going to be quite unfamiliar to them. So they're the perfect orchestra for that because they'll eat it up for breakfast. We know they will. Um, but because the music's quite unfamiliar to them, there's going to be an excitement of that yeah. as well, um, which is going to be, we hope, electric. Well, I think we've chosen the pieces we've chosen, haven't we? Because they're good music. I mean, they're fantastic. They're just fantastic scores and and scores that aren't heard very much. We're opening the concert with uh, Richard Adensel's Goodbye, Mr. Chips, which I have to say has been a favourite film of mine since I was that high. Um, it's a wonderful score. And, of course, Richard Adensel is more well-known for the Warsaw Concerto from Dangerous Moonlight, which almost everybody knows. And I think a lot of people don't realise actually how many film scores he did, and yeah. a lot of them are sensational. Mm -hmm. And the the piece that we're doing from Goodbye, Mr. Chips is basically uh, an arrangement of the school song that you hear in Goodbye, Mr. Chips that all the, the, the boys sing. And it's the most wonderful theme, and I think it's going to be a fantastically rousing opening to the concert. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. And, um, you know, one of the pieces I'm doing is by an ex-teacher of mine, uh, Richard Rodney Bennett. Right. And um, I, I just felt we had to have something of Richard's in the concert. It's very difficult to put a concert of film music together without doing something of Richard's. Well, really, in a way, it? especially, if, you know, if you're limiting yourself to British, then you've got to have of Richard. Of course, of course. Um, you know, who he was a fantastically influential teacher for me to have. I mean, he is so richly talented, it's not true. Um, at the time I was having lessons with him, he was writing the music for Far From the Madding Crowd. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God that, you know, if my lessons were two weeks apart, he'd finished almost the whole score in the period between one lesson and another. Whereas I would go to him with one page of A4 and he'd say, Chris, I think you should scrap this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that just you know, illustrates for you um, the pace at which he worked, the fluency that he's always had. And, and I think we've, we've decided to do his, probably his most famous score, haven't we? Murder well, on Murder the on the Orient Express uh, is his most famous score. It was a close call for me because Far From the Madding Crowd is a score that I absolutely love and I would have loved to have done. But We'll do that in the next concert. You can't do everything. There's another score of his called Figures in a Landscape, which was a Joe Rosey film, mm. which is absolutely stunning, and I would love to do that in another concert. Well, I'd like to do a whole concert of Richard's music. What can Hope you you're watching this, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> and um, another piece that I'm doing uh, is by Sir Arthur Bliss, you know, Master of the Queen's Music and all that. And uh, I did come into contact with him at the Guildhall because he came to conduct the orchestra for two or three days. And he was already well into his 70s then, but fantastically sort of virile and alive. And uh, I feel he's a composer whose concert music has been very sadly neglected. Mm -hmm. You know, now that a certain amount of distance um, has happened between his writing some of these, I think, really quite remarkable pieces. And now you can perhaps appreciate a little bit better uh, that he was he was really an important composer in his own right. And, and his score for Things to Come is probably, again, his most well-known film score, and quite rightly so, because it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm not sure that everybody even remembers now that it was a collaboration between him and H.G. Wells. That's right. It's remarkable. And the score is brilliant. Here it is. Thank you, Sir Arthur Bliss. <laughs> We're doing two sections from that. Um, the March, uh, everybody will recognise when they hear it. It's absolutely marvellous tune. So I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to this. In fact, I'm looking forward to it more than anything else I can think of at the moment. <laughs> I think it's going to be a pretty unique evening. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs>